Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarner with Weingarner Racing. Today's video is for you Ford guys. I asked in a previous post what you guys wanted to see, and several people said, I would love to see some small block Ford stuff. And I told you it really depends on what comes in the shop. And well, these came in. So did those, but that's a later video. That's a AFR 220, by the way. Anyway, what this head is, this is the Pro Max Project X. You can kind of see it. Yep, there we go. 185cc head. Probably the one I've been asked about the most. Could have swore I did a video with this, but I guess not because people keep asking for it. So here we go. Um, this is the head. Now, this is a Chinese casting. I'm not going to make any bones about that. It's definitely a Chinese casting. It looks it's very similar to an AFR casting. I can't say if it's a copy, I, I, but they're very similar. Now, if you have been watching my previous videos, you know I you have known I've been complaining about the valve seats on some of the Pro Max heads, but that valve seat material that I'm talking about, that copper impregnated one, is specific to the only the Pro Max LS3 large, the 260cc head, not to these, not to the small block, not to the big block. Really, it's just that LS3 large port head, not these. So just to kind of give you an idea, even though this is a Chinese casting, these have ductile iron seats, and these are these are nice. They're not they're not as they're a pretty nice seat material. They're not as nice to cut or to me to machine as say an AFR or a Brodix, but it's still a very nice seat. And I could take I have, can verify the durability on these because on the small block Chevy side I have used um, their heads on the Dyno Mule and made hundreds of Dyno runs, no seat issues, and they've been off and checked over and over. These actually sealed up out of the box. I mean, these are these are good. So that when I was making a post about the seat material, it was really just to the LS3 large port head, not to these. I know you're like, oh, I'm a Ford guy. I didn't even hear anything about these. What I'm trying to say is these are quality castings. I do have to preface it by saying I am a Pro Max dealer, so I do sell these heads, and these obviously a customer bought these, so I get to share the results with you. But I'm also a dealer for AFR and many other things too, but might as well be up front. So anyway, Chinese casting. I trust this seat material. It's very nice. Good guides and everything else. Like I said, the port and shape and stuff looks very similar to an AFR. Here's some of the specs. First off, the chambers are 58 cc's. And they're nice chambers. They're very, very smooth. You can tell from the finish, hopefully, without the light flashing over and over. Very nice job there. They have a five angle valve job, but they actually blend them from the factory. And I'm gonna show you flow numbers for this, so don't worry about that. You will get to see flow numbers. But um, it does really nice. I did take some measurements. So the throat, which would be, let me just drop this a few times. The throat's from here across, and that measured 1.851 inches or 91.6%. So if you're one of the guys that likes a DIY porting stuff, don't make the throat larger. It's already kind of big enough. What you could benefit from this is because the stock valve sizes are 202, 1600. What could be a benefit is if you were to cut this out to say a 205 or 208, and then I think you could actually improve this quite the, especially the little numbers quite a bit. Um, however, wait till you see the flow numbers because they're out, outstanding. The bowl is 98%. That's measuring straight across the guide. And 98% of a 202 intake valve. The exhaust valves are 1.6. It's got a radius exhaust valve job, which I don't know how well you could see here. Yep, yeah, it's nice. The valves on these, and this kind of affected flow numbers, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. This particular setup was ordered with a hydraulic roller spring, and hydraulic roller springs typically have a lower installed height than a solid roller spring. So what I mean by that is, I tell you that because the valve length, so from here to the tip, is typically shorter on a hydraulic roller setup because we don't need all the installed height. In other words, they're not using the same intake valve. It might be the same diameter, but not the same length if you were to order a solid roller setup versus a hydraulic roller setup. And I say that because if you look at this, there is no back cut. That's simply the seat angle. I do know if you order a solid roller, they typically have a back cut. So maybe it's just, I know what this is. These valves come from Rev. Um, that's what they use. But I think on the longer ones, just because it's a different length valve, it's just different design, it actually has a back cut. These do not. So you're like, well, what's it make? What difference does it make? Not having a back cut 
typically hurts the low lift flow. But having, uh, sorry, let me back that up. Having a back cut, having a back cut helps low lift flow. So not having one actually helps peak flow. And I'm talking like 600 and up lift. So this itself is not helping low lift flow. So if you're a DIY guy, what you can do is you could order a beer and then get a head, a 202 valve and one with a back cut and you'll be good to go. You'd actually pick up some low lift flow. Um, however, you're gonna lose some peak flow as well. So anyway, there's that. This is the exhaust valve. This is just a regular nail head exhaust valve. It's not a tulip. And that does affect exhaust flow in case you're wondering what a tulip is. A tulip will have one that comes kind of up like this. If you ever seen an AFR valve, that's what they use. And um, tulips typically help exhaust flow for sure. Nail heads do not. So anyway, there's that. Looks nice. But let me flip the head around real quick. I'm trying to do this in one shot because I'm in a hurry to get other stuff done in the shop. So sorry about the video quality. But I'm um, just trying to get other stuff done. I'm going to flip it around here for you. This is the intake ports. They're not too bad. I did measure the minimum cross section, which is through here and up and down. It measured 2.24 CSA. So not, not too shabby, not too shabby at all. Um, let me show you this top side. Let me lay it down gently. There we go. This is different. So these are the seals that they use. These aren't my favorite seals, but they're better than some of the stuff that they had been using. Um, these seals, they're great as far as sealing up, getting oil onto the guide. Perfect for that. So don't think anything bad about if you see these seals used on different engines or different cylinder heads, don't feel bad about these. These absolutely do because if you can, there's like different ridges on the inside and they definitely wipe away the oil. Great, great for that. The only thing I don't like is if your spring's not located correctly, which you could tell they use locators, which is awesome. Several companies do not use locators. What it does, it keeps the spring from dancing in here. If you do not use a locator, that spring hits that top and will bust that clip right off and it ends up in your oil pan. It's just not a good idea. But because they use locators, that's not an issue. These seals, what I like about them, are very easy to remove. The ones that they'd used but previously had these steel, it was just, it was similar to what I use in all my stuff. There was steel cladding, but they were perfectly steel. They had no rub on the inside. They were the worst to take off. I'm talking like, you're gonna spend 40 minutes taking off the seals. They were just a pain. The ones that have a steel on the outside, but a rubber still on the inside, those are easier to take off. And that's typically what I use. Um, I'm just trying to save time in the video because I know none of you really watch all the way through anyway. But nothing wrong with those. Nice ID locators. Awesome. You might say, wow, 7 16 stud, this is an upgrade. This runs about 20 bucks more to go from a 3 8 to a 7 16 I think it's actually 25 bucks more. They do have adjustable guide plates. So when you get these, these are just snug they're not tightened on so when you get their heads what you need to do is you need to put this on your engine and the way that these work is you'll loosen this put your um, push rods through obviously put your rockers on and you'll slide them to where they need to be so everything lines up tighten down um, you'll use thread sealer on the intake one which i actually think is that one and then i put anises on the exhaust one you tighten them down i think it torques between 45 and 50 foot pounds and you're good to go, but you have to adjust these. You can't just run them like they are here. They just put this to assemble them to ship out. This is not how you run these. You have to adjust these. But it's good that they have those. The ones that are not adjustable, every time I've ever seen them used, I shouldn't say every time, almost every time, they don't fit quite right. So it's, in other words, these are locked together. You'll have one, like the intake might be perfect, but the exhaust is off. Or if you get the exhaust almost perfect, the intake's off. These are so much better. So that's actually a, in case you're buying these, these are actually usually an upgrade, but they come standard. To the exhaust side, the exhaust ports are not raised up. Um, they're really short and you'll see the exhaust flow is kind of, but it's Ford. Fords don't have great exhaust flow. Chevys are ways up here. So it's one of the disadvantages, but it's nice. You can run your stuff. It's got multiple patterns. I'm not for sure for all the patterns, but um, some, I don't run Ford headers obviously, but yeah, they have multiple patterns for you guys. But let's face it, you're not here to hear me rant about the head. But I am going to move it because I get a little nervous about it falling off. Well, let me show you the flow numbers because it's about to be blown away right here. Okay. Here are the flow numbers. This was flown on my signs bench. 
this one. My digital 680. 4030 bore, I don't use an exhaust pipe. There we go. Now, not having a back cut hurt the 400 number, but still, even without a back cut, 237. I have to say, that's pretty good. It's really, really good. Remember, this port's only 185 cc's. This is not a big port at all. That's really good. If you were to get a back cut on this, it'd probably be 247. So you'd gain about 10 CFM there. This would have probably gone to 192. So it'd gain 10 there. And this would probably been in the 120, 130 range. So here's what I mean. Not having a back cut really hurts from 400 down, which, you know what I mean. 500, usually it's a wash. So at 500, 268. You look at 600, 279, but check this out. It just keeps climbing. It goes all the way up to 294 C CFM. 294 CFM from this little bitty port. That's outstanding. It really is a good flow. Granted, if you had a back cut on this, it's probably like 288, 290 in range uh, as far as peak flow. But still, from that small of a port, that's some pretty good numbers, man. I'm telling you. The exhaust side, well, it's Ford exhaust flow numbers. Not to diss the, exhaust, the Ford guys, but you guys know this. Your exhaust flow numbers just aren't that good because unless you raise that port, they just are not great. Because um, check out four, 163. It's not horrible, but I mean, compared to like small block Chevys in the same range, you're nowhere near that. You're way off by about 20. In peak, it goes all the way up to 200 to 800 lift. You might say, why didn't you go higher? Well, the retainer hit the um, seal. And... For the most part, it's pretty good. Remember this without an exhaust pipe. I don't flow with exhaust pipe. So, yeah, really, really good numbers. I mean, if you're like in, got a 302, 347 thing, and you're like, I just want to make it a little bit better. I mean, let's be honest. Any stock Ford heads absolutely suck. And if you say, no, GT40s and GT40Ps are good. They only flow with valve job work, 200. That's it. On the intake side, this flows more than they do on the exhaust than they do on the intake. So this is so much better. It's a huge improvement. And I might say, well, how much do they run? I know I'm not going to put it in the video, and I'm going to tell you why. Someone's going to watch this three years from now and be like, man, is there that much? Oh, I'm going to call and order. And they won't be that price in the time that they order. So that's why I don't ever put prices in a video, because I know people watch them later. But I will say, for reference, these are about, in general, they're about $600 less, probably more, than a full CNC ported AFR head. So they're really budget friendly. Are there cheaper Ford heads? Absolutely. So like the AFR Enforcer head, which is their Chinese um, head, it doesn't flow as good as this, um, but it's also smaller. That one is cheaper than this, but this one will make more power. I'm just going to tell you. So it's not the cheapest one, but it's definitely cheaper than a full CNC ported head. So hopefully you guys got something out of the video. Sorry, it wasn't the best quality. I'm trying to rush to get this thing done because I got to get this box up and shipped out. And then, for don't worry, Ford guys, I got other stuff coming. This is it. This one I've been dying to do. I've been waiting for it to show up in the shop. This is the AFR Renegade, part number 1451, which is a 220. This is the biggest small block Ford head that AFR makes, and I got to flow it. So, first time I'm getting to flow these, and I'll share that in a different video. But, so more Ford content coming up shortly. But to this, it's a really nice head. Go make some power. Remember guys, I'm no Superman. I do not port cast iron heads. You guys take care.